Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. After a long bout with Europe's information police, Twitter CEO Elon Musk, he has now confirmed that Twitter will bow down to new laws on censorship that are currently being rolled out under the European Union. This news comes from an interview with Elon Musk with French TV, and during a back and forth with the interviewer, well, Musk actually defended the rights of Twitter users to speak relatively freely. He initially explained why he refuses to censor content on Twitter. He explained there are things people find in bad taste or things they disagree with, things they'd like to have censored even. But he said, no, we're not going to censor it, even if it's something we really dislike, because where do we stop? Otherwise, if you don't like something and you censor it, sooner or later, it will be only, it will only be a matter of time before you are censored. But then Elon Musk explained the condition on which he would allow censorship on Twitter. This would be if there were laws that forced the removal of content. He said this, If a law is enacted because the law in a democracy represents the will of the people, if the law represents the will of the people, we must respect it. And he added, however, that censorship on Twitter will be limited only to what is required by law. He said, on the other hand, to say that if we are going to put ourselves above the law and do more than the law, I think is not right. Now, the problem that Elon Musk is facing alongside every other user on Twitter now is that the extent of this law currently being rolled out globally represents a deep and pervasive form of censorship. It's a system of censorship that will likely go beyond what is currently not allowed even on U.S. platforms. It is the European Union exporting its rules on so-called hate speech. It's rules on a system that censors what it brands as disinformation, which it determines apparently, and a regime to allow the EU more direct control over the companies. Musk's interview with French TV took place, notably, right ahead of a visit from the European censorship leader. This is Internal Market Commissioner Thierry Breton. He explains, or sorry, he plans to visit Twitter headquarters in the United States to carry out a stress test of the platform. And Twitter is not going to be the only company in America being brought to heel under the Europeans law, European Union's laws against free speech. The EU Commission, this official, they are planning to hold a meeting at other companies in Silicon Valley. This include Google, these include Meta, which is Facebook and Instagram, and it includes others, including AI platforms. Political reports that some of the American companies are going to be brought, are going through what they call informal checks to, quote, see if they are ready for the new rules which come into force in August very soon. If a company, even an American company, violates the European Union's rules, well, the U.S. company, the America-based companies, they have to pay the European uh, censorship system a fine of up to 6% of their annual revenue. Ahead of the planned meetings, Breton told Politico that he wants the companies to know that he's, quote, the enforcer. He said, We are going there, but don't want to be vocal before because I don't want to speak too much. But we offer this, and I'm happy that some platforms took our proposal. I am the enforcer. I represent the law, which is the will of the state and the people. Yeah, European state and European law. But folks, the will of the people, where have you heard that before? Regardless, the law in question is the DSA, the Digital Services Act. And technically, it's already in place, but currently it's voluntary. Soon, it will not be voluntary. You will not have a choice to follow it. As Breton told Politico, I just reminded Musk and Twitter that by August 25th, it will become a legal obligation to fight disinformation. So what is the Digital Services Act? Well, it's a sweeping set of rules for companies operating on the Internet. It was passed by an overwhelming margin in the European Parliament. They had 539 votes for it, only 54 against it. It has regulations for companies in just about everything. Advertising, transparency, and many, many other areas regarding how they conduct business online. 
Most of all, though, the most contentious part, arguably, is it has authoritarian laws on what it defines as very large online platforms and search engines when it comes to information control and censorship notably. It states, very large digital platforms and services are required to analyze the systemic risks they pose and to carry out a risk mitigation assessment. It adds that this risk mitigation assessment it's going to be, quote, carried out on an annual basis and will allow for continuous monitoring to reduce risks related to, one, the dissemination of illegal content determined by them, two, adverse effects on fundamental rights, three, misinformation or manipulation of elections, four, Cyber violence against women or harm to minors online. In other words, not physical violence, but cyber violence. It says, quote, these measures must be balanced against restrictions on, on freedom of expression and will be subject to independent audits. The Digital Services Act also notes this will not be entirely up to the platforms themselves to judge on their own. It states that to ensure the companies follow the dictates of the European Union, well, the Commission will have exclusive powers to supervise very large online platforms and search engines for compliance with their obligations. They will be monitored at European level in cooperation with the member states. In other words, the free speech of every single person on the internet could now be restricted by the lowest common denominator. The countries with the greatest levels of free speech could now be censored by the rules of countries with the lowest levels of free speech. The tyrants of Europe could restrict the freedom of Americans. And it's of course still unclear to what extent Elon Musk is going to allow this to happen. In his interview with French TV, he still strongly defended free speech, including in the face of some actually very difficult questions. If we want to get technical, in fact, Elon Musk stated his stance is that Twitter will follow the law. And what does it mean when the laws of Europe conflict with the laws of the United States, the American Constitution? The challenge the EU is going to have to deal with is that its censorship laws on this, well, much of what they look to censor does not violate the law in the United States. In fact, by censoring, they may be violating American law. In America, we have the Constitution. Under the First Amendment, speech is protected here almost to an extreme extent. In fact, even seditious speech in the United States has been debatably protected since the time of Thomas Jefferson. This goes back to the challenges against the Alien and Sedition Acts from way back in 1798. And fittingly, those laws were in anticipation of a war people worried, were worried would take place against France. Now. Back then, that was when the tyrants of Europe were rolling out the guillotine and they were planting the early seeds of the socialist and communist revolutions that would soon sweep the entire European continent. And here we are again, debating over Europe on our rights to free speech. In other news, and speaking of tyranny, the International Monetary Fund had something new in store. They've, now, they've announced they're working on a global CBDC. That's a centralized bank digital currency, again, under the IMF. That means the move away from paper money and towards a digital payment system where every single transaction can be monitored and regulated. Here's IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva explaining what they have in store. If we are to be successful, uh, CBDCs could not be fragmented national propositions. To have transactions more efficient and fairer, we need systems that connect countries. In other words, we need interoperability. Uh, and for this reason, at the IMF, we are working uh, hard on the concept of a global CBDC platform to trade and to manage risks. And the key point with that was easy to miss. What the IMF managing director just said is that centralized bank digital currencies cannot just be fragmented. In other words, 
You can't have different countries all around the world, each with their own CBDCs, with their own rules. What she's saying is that the world needs a centralized, globally, CBDC. One digital currency to rule them all. Well, that's all we have for YouTube for the rest of the episode. Come join us on epochtv.com, epochtv.com. Link in the description below this video. We have some really big interviews coming up. Trevor Loudon joins us talking about the woke revolution now taking place in America, well, anti-woke, and what it means. We also have Colin Wright on with us talking about how Twitter is actually fighting back on censorship, ironically by censoring both sides. Join us on Epoch TV for the rest of the discussion. The American dream is under attack. The greatest country in the world is now more polarized than ever before. This is about targeting women of color. Put your mask on. It's an insult to our country as the world is already laughing at us. While we're dividing ourselves from within, while the nation is focused on internal battles, a greater threat looms in the horizon. The Chinese Communist Party. They're systematically infiltrating our government. They're stealing our technology and they're attacking our freedoms. The FBI is opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. The Chinese are preparing for war. We Americans are very good at being oblivious as to what our enemies are saying. And we did not pay attention to Osama bin Laden until one day he killed 2,977 Americans. Oh my God! This is not just a battle of ideologies or just about pursuit of dominance. This is a war that will alter the course of our lives. And if we lose, it will condemn our children and future generations to a world of unimaginable horrors. This is why my show in the Epoch Times is so critical. We're not afraid to take on the Chinese regime head on. And he said, they told me that they, if I keep talking to you, they're going to hire a hitman to chop off one of my hands. We're not afraid to call out the CCP for their atrocities. We're completely independent. Our only interest is in traditional journalism and reporting truthfully. Bizarre news today. The Chinese Communist Party is opening up police stations, departments, and well, working as overseas bureaus all around the world, including right here in New York. You heard that right. It's time to replace the Chinese regime's propaganda with truth. Get back to the basics. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All you have to do is subscribe to Epoch TV and you'll get so much more in return. Just click on the link in the description below this video and you're on your way. Baby, this is our time.